Mr. Schimmel, let me introduce, we are moving on now to the witness of the Gospels, and you now have 20 minutes to make a presentation right. regarding Tony, Section 3, up, the witness of the Gospels. Uh, as he sets it up, I'll just mention this. You've heard of, uh, you know what a straw man argument is in a debate? You build a straw man, which doesn't really reflect the beliefs of the person that you're supposed to be debating, and then you just destroy that straw man. I don't know, Doug, that you, I don't think you've seen our video then, Left Behind Let Astray, because I make it very clear in our video, and you can have a free copy if you want for documentation, okay, uh, uh, out there. I make it very clear, we don't say Mark McDonald came up with the pre-trib rapture. All we state is that Mark McDonald is the first one that we found that emphasizes a secret rapture, that it will be a secret and she says it will be unobserved by the human eye. And it's something you have to see in the spirit. And it's something that will be unobserved. It's a secret coming of Christ. That's what we emphasize. So he just spent five minutes attacking a straw man and not, not dealing with our deal. We do go through Mark McDonald because she influenced Edward Irving. And we show that Edward Irving, and I didn't have time to get into it because I had to defend the church fathers, at least defend the martyrs of the faith just like I defend martyrs now. These guys were, some of these guys were beautiful men of God that gave their lives for Jesus. And we have our Bibles because they laid their lives down for that. So I spent my time defending that, defending, saying you can't attack all their writings just because they're not pre-trib and it wasn't around yet, you know, and just write all these guys off and everything they said. Otherwise, you have to write off their premillennialism and we can't even use them against the preterists and so forth who attack uh, premillennial theology. So I would say this in uh, continuing on uh, with this. We do show where Edward Irving in that setting, I didn't have time, but it's in our video where he literally talks about we're in the church of Philadelphia and we will be taken and Laodicea will be left. And he said, we're the man-child, which is really not just Christ, but a collective body of believers. And that man-child will be caught up. And the woman we left for that, those 1,260 days. And that was, that was pre the last three and a half years. But that's what Darby was. And Darby followed his man-child teaching after Irving taught it. And we show documentation where Darby came up with that after it was first taught among the Irvingites. Of course, you don't want to associate with Mark McDonald the Irvingites because guess what? They were false prophets. And a guy that was predicting the coming of the Lord among them admitted later that we had all these visions and revelations about the coming rapture and so forth, but we were deluded by Satan, he said. So of course you don't want to disassociate with that. But our video draw, uh, makes the connections. And we only say that Margaret Donald pro tre tra taught a secret rapture. We do show where others believe that she taught a pre-trib rapture. And we said we see how even some pre-tribs believe that she taught a partial pre-trib rapture, but that we ourselves are not going into agreement with that. Anyway... The rapture in the Gospels. Thank you for uh, getting that out, Tony. Hopefully, uh, oh, there we go. Okay, now Jesus did say after the tribulation, after the tribulation when they asked about his coming, after, not seven years before. I'll tell you right now, if Doug Stoffrey had a scripture that said seven years before the end of the tribulation, he'd gather his elect from the four winds, I'll tell you right now, he wouldn't be interpreting that as not being the rapture. He'd be all over that as a rapture. But... They don't like this verse because after the tribulation, the elect are gathered from the four winds. Now follow this, guys. This is very interesting. And I don't know why this doesn't want to work so well. You're <clears throat> well, I still have a clear path there. But Mark <laughs> says in the same thing after the tribulation, from the farthest end of the earth to the farthest end of what? Heaven. It's not just those people on the earth that are gathered after the tribulation. It's from the farthest ends of heaven as well. The next slide. And this is from Tim LaHaye, the predominant, most popular pre-trib teacher in the last 20 years. Look what he says about Matthew 24, 31. At this moment, the second installment of the what? The rapture will occur when Christ gathers together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. He's referring to the scripture that says after the tribulation. He calls it the rapture, but he calls it the second what? The second installment. The problem is, as Tim LaHaye has admitted, that he can't find a passage that shows the first installment happening before the second installment. He can find the second installment and call it the second installment, but he can't find the first installment, which makes this what? The first installment. It's the rapture, and Jesus said it's after the tribulation. And I value the words of Jesus when he's asked about his coming and so forth. Uh, right here, uh, let's see. If it said before the tribulation, I'm telling you right now, a lot of pre trids would be using it. By the way, uh, we have a, a passage here in second, or Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 through 31, where it says after the tribulation in verse 29, and that's the elect will be gathered, and it mentions the trumpet, it mentions the clouds, 
And this is from the 1611 King James translation again, guys. 1611 King James. Look what the King James translators put in the marginal notes. A shout out to Adam, uh, Alan Kirshner for draw, drawing my attention to this. The King James translators, what, look what they put there. 1 Corinthians 15, 52. A cross reference to this coming. Behold, he comes with the clouds. And, I'm sorry. Uh, that's Revelation 1 7. If you look up above the yellow thing that's all marked up, just look above a little bit. You'll see Revelation 1 7. That's where it says, Behold, he comes with the clouds, and every eye will see him. That's not a secret rapture. Amen? And they also that pierced him, the Jews. And all kings of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Just like Matthew 24, the tribes of the earth, it says, will mourn. But look what else they put there. 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Behold, I tell you, mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be what? Change in a moment in the twinkling of the eye, the rapture text. What other scripture did they put there? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, in reference to the rapture. Amen? That he'll descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. Amen? The dead in Christ will rise first, and then we'll be caught up. The King James translators understood that, apparently, from that marginal note, to be speaking of the same things, the same coming. And I can tell you right now, I'd be shocked if, if uh, Dr. Stoffer can show me scripture, I'm sorry, not scripture, just show me the King James translators where they said, no, no, we believed in a pre trib rapture. The second coming, by and large, at least, was at the second coming. Should we demonize them for this? Are they heretics? Are they looking for antichrist instead of Christ all of a sudden? Absolutely not. That would be ridiculous. So we shouldn't do that or say that about anybody because we disagree with they, them having the expectation that the early church had had. I'm not a King James only guy, but I appreciate the King James translation. I memorized almost the first half of the book of Revelation in the King James Bible. I appreciate it. The revelation of Jesus Christ is God gave him service, and I'm going to use all my time if I start going through it. I don't have it all memorized now because it's been years and years, but I still have plenty of it memorized. I love the King James, and I love what they've done in those marginal notes there. A lot of King James only people hate the marginal notes because it shows that the King James uh, translators recognize that there were some other options for translations. Benjamin Wills Newton, who was Darby's closest associate, the co-founder of the Plymouth Brethren Movement, he told Darby, after Darby came up and started begin, uh, emphasizing this pre-trib teaching, he said, at last Darby wrote from Cork saying, the gospel of Matthew was not teaching church truth, but kingdom truth, and so on. He explained it to me, as I, and I said, Darby, if you admit that distinction, you are virtually giving up Christianity. Well, they kept on at that until they worked out the result as we know it, the secret rapture as bad enough, was bad enough, but this was worse. What's he worried about? He's worried about saying, hey, these scriptures aren't for, for us. These teachings of Jesus' apostles aren't for the church. And that we would lose precious teaching of Jesus in the scripture as being relevant to the church. I don't mean to say, and I hope I didn't say, that Doug Stoffer never reads anything from Hebrews and James and 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, 1st, 2nd Peter, Jude, and Revelation, or the Gospels. My point was that he says, it's somebody else's mail. It's not written to us. And that was the very concern that Benjamin Wills Newton had in regard to what Darby was doing and beginning to cut up the scripture like Marcion was doing. But way beyond what Darby's done, Doug, and I, Doug, I love you, bro. I love you, but man, to say those books is somebody else's mail and they don't really comport a lot with Paul's teachings and we can only accept them where they agree with what you believe is Paul's interpret or Paul's writings, that's a serious thing. How many of you believe that those books aren't written to the church? How many believe that? Well, praise God. I don't know who's in what camp. Praise God. Because you need to be reading those letters as mail to the church. And he's right. He doesn't like them because they do what times warn about going through tribulation. He understands that. That's why he goes like this with some of them to a degree anyway. I encourage you to follow the whole counsel of God. The church is built on the apostles, not just Paul. Amen. And the prophets and the chief cornerstone, Jesus Christ. We're really built on Jesus. Amen. All right. In uh, Tim Hayes' book, The Rapture, he, he uh, has a thing where he states at the beginning, he says, doesn't it seem strange that although the Bible advises Christians how to face ordinary everyday troubles, it submits absolutely no instructional relation, uh, uh, relate, relation to the worst time in the world that we'll ever face. In other words, hey, why doesn't the Bible say anything about preparing us for the tribulation period? But guess what Matthew 24 does? It prepares us just like the book of Revelation does. But I think it's interesting, in the same exact book, he has a, a statement 
There, there, uh, there must be some significant reason our Lord warned his disciples in the Olivet Discourse, which is the most important outline of future events, amen, in the Bible, to beware of false teachers. 13 times he warned, uh, uh, but look at the heading to that, guys. What's the heading? Read up above what I just read. Jesus' last day warning to his what? His church. That's either a big goof by the editor, <laughs> because it's not supposed to be to the church, I thought. But sometimes it's to the church when they want it to be the church. Other times it's not. You know, it's kind of a strange game that's sometimes played with the scripture. I think I might have a low batter here. I'm, mm. I don't care what hand go. I've got it in, but... It, there uh, you go. It's gone ahead, too. All right. Thank you, bro. Can we sit up here? Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll step back here and it'll work a little better. If you need Tony to come up, that's okay with Doug. <laughs> thank you so much. Appreciate that, Doug. All right, so as we go on, uh, Jesus, after Christ comes to receive his own. Uh, now, this is, from, this is from Tim LaHaye, and he's already said Matthew 24, 29, 31 is what? The last installment of the rapture, right? Second installment, right? Well, where's the first one in this most important outline of church history? He identifies it. After Christ comes to receive his own, Matthew 24, 9. That's where he receives his own, supposedly. The tribulation begins here on earth. So after he comes to receive his own, Matthew 24, 9. Now I'm still looking for that one verse. I gave you 10 from the very get-go, guys. I'm still looking for one from Doug. I gave you 10 from the very opening statement. I'm looking for one verse that teaches the preacher of rapture, one passage that teaches the preacher of rapture. Tim LaHaye says he's found it right here. Or at least he's alluding to this being the, where the rapture takes place after Christ comes to receive his own, Matthew 24, 9. Let's look at what 24, 9 says. Then they will rapture you to heaven before the tribulation. Is that what it says? No. Then they will deliver you to what? Tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations because of my what? My name. Who's going to be persecuted because of his name? This is when the tribulation starts, guys. When the tribulation starts, we're persecuted because of whose name? The name of Christ. That's not non-believing Jews right when the tribulation starts. It's those suffering for the name of Jesus. Now I'm telling you right now. When the tribulation starts, according to pre-tribs, usually we're raptured right before the tribulation starts, right? Well, here, according to the, tribulation, the, the scripture of Jesus, when the tribulation starts, what happens? We're persecuted for his name. If the rapture just happened right there, there should be nobody to persecute because of the name of Jesus. Amen? They should all be gone. But when the tribulation starts, there's all kinds of Christians being persecuted, brothers and sisters, and we need to be ready. And that's my biggest concern is that we are being sold I've got to be nice, man, but I'm concerned. A delusion that we don't have to go through the tribulation period, and it's going to be like Pearl Harbor. It's going to be like 9-11. It's going to shock the church. I thought we weren't supposed to be here. I was taught over and over again that I wasn't going to be here. Two days after the Olivet Discourse, just the day before Jesus was crucified, he says, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. He also says a little further, in the world you will have tribulation, but take courage. I've overcome the world. Do you believe this is written to non-believing Jews, or do you believe this is written to the church? When he sends the helper to guide us in all truth, who is that written to? Who did Jesus state that to the day before he was crucified? Us. He's going to guide us in all truth. Well, just two days before that, guys, or I'm sorry, that's, that, that night, actually, that night before the crucifixion, I don't ask you to take them out of the world, not to rapture us prematurely, really, but to keep them from the evil one. I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but I also for those who will believe on them, on me, through their word. Guess who he was praying for? Not just his apostles, but have you come to faith through the word of the apostles? He's praying for you right there. Isn't that awesome to know that Jesus prayed for you? But you know part of his prayer was that you wouldn't be taken out of the world. That you'd be left in the world to be a witness that at the very end he says, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. We have a great commission to go into the world and reach the lost. And he's not going to receive us to himself until he comes back at the second coming. Right here in Matthew 24, 9, just says, then they will deliver you to tribulation and will kill you. Personal, plural pronoun. You, all of you. Who's he talking to here? He says that they'll be persecuted for his name. There'll be great tribulation. They'll be uh, gathered after the tribulation period. What happened? Who's he talking to? He says the disciples came to him. Which disciples? We learned from Mark 13, 3, it was Peter, James, John, and Andrew. Peter, James, John, and Andrew. Those names sound familiar to you? They were the apostles of the early what? 
Church, he's giving them these instructions. Do you think they're supposed to forget the warnings about facing the Antichrist and just ignore that? In fact, even earlier in Matthew, what do we read? Jesus says much earlier than that, in church discipline, if he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the who? Tell it to the who? The church. He already has the church in view. I'm not saying that was the church, but he has them speaking minutes. to them as the church, uh, as those who will be the church, they're the church in embryo. And he says, many false prophets will arise and mislead many. Matthew 24. We're still talking Matthew 24, guys. When he's bringing them through the end times. That greatest of all outlines of the end times that, uh, is what uh, Tim Leahy had said. Let's look at what it says here. Many false prophets will arise and mislead many. Then look when it, where it's capitalized and bolded. And underline, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then what will happen? And then the end will come. When's the end going to come according to Jesus? What did he tell Peter, James, the apostle John, Andrew? He said the gospel of the kingdom be preached in all, all the world's witness, all nations. Then the end would come. Not seven years before that. In fact, Paul, uh, his worldwide campaign, he says that Jesus is going to come back, after, uh, but it won't happen until... The fullness of the Gentiles has come in. There's more, and the context there is then all Israel will be saved. It's salvation. But those last Gentiles have to be saved. And then Jesus comes when the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. And when he comes in, the deliverer will come from Zion. That's when they see him who's pierced. That's when he takes away Israel's sins. That's the second coming, guys. That's not a preacher of rapture. I'm sorry. 2 Peter 3, verses 9, 10, and 12. Peter talks about this worldwide campaign and how God's not slow about his return. The Lord's not slow about returning. He, he's patient toward us, not willing that any would perish. He wants us to get off our rear ends. So none would perish, we'd witness to the lost. So more people come to Christ. He says, looking for and hastening. Hastening means speeding up. Looking for and hastening or speeding up the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be what? Destroyed by burning. And the elements will melt with intense heat. Does that sound like a preacher of rapture, guys? Yes or no? No, we're waiting for his coming, but he's waiting for us to get done with our, our, the gospel commission that he had given us. Immediately after the tribulation... Jesus said, immediately after the tribulation is when he's coming, of those days. But be sure of this, he said, that if the head of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have been on alert and would not have allowed his house to be broken into. When is he coming like a thief, according to Jesus in Matthew 24? Immediately after the what? Immediately after the tribulation. Immediately after the tribulation. The harvest, there's the, there's the commission again. The wheat and the tares, let them grow together. First gather up the tares, and then gather up the wheat. And he tells us that this takes place at the end of the age. Schofield, free trade leader in the last century, inverts the order and says, really, first the wheat's gathered. That totally contradicts what Jesus taught. Pre trib has the wheat being gathered first. The book of Revelation and what Jesus taught there, the tares are bundled together first. And they're going to be bundled together at Armageddon, guys, gathered just for God to just wipe them out. And then he's going to gather his wheat after the tares are gathered together. And it takes place when? He says, at the end of the age, at the end of the age, okay? Not seven years before the end of the age. Then the righteous will shine forth as the Son in the kingdom of the Father. By the way, they asked Jesus, as he was sitting there on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things happen and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? You know what the Greek is there? Suntelias to Ionas. So, Suntelias to Ionas. End of the age. It means the completion, to bring to completion of an age. And he says, they want to know when's the end of the age. He tells them that you're going to see the birth pains, but the end is not yet. The one who endures the end will be saved. Okay? Uh, he talks about the gospel being preached in all the world. Then the end will come. See, the end isn't at the beginning. He says the end is not yet. But what has Jesus given the Great Commission? And I have to take serious, serious, have a serious difference with you in this, Doug. When Jesus One says, minute. go therefore, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, there's that gospel being preached again until the end of the age, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the what? End of the age, end of the world. Guess what the Greek is, guys? Santelios, Santelios to Ionas. Same exact words when Jesus said, when they asked Jesus, when will, we, when will these things take place? What will be the sign of your coming? And it's to Ionas. 
They're talking about when will the end of the age happen? And he brings them through the tribulation, tells them the end's not yet. You're going to see the abomination of desolation, the Antichrist. You're going to see all these things. You, plural pronoun, will see all these things. And then immediately after the tribulation, then you'll be gathered. When? At the end of the age. The same Greek words are given with the Great Commission. And he says he's with us always, even unto the what? Suntelias to Ionas, the same Greek word. They would have understood that to mean until the end of the tribulation period. That's how long the grasp of commission is. And yeah, the tribulation is going to be rough. If Thank it happens you, Mr. Life, Schimmel. But he's with us always. Thank you, brother. Love you guys. Mr. Stoffer, would you like to provide a rebuttal? That's right. There it goes. Yeah, it takes about 10 seconds for it to change. Three weeks on the rebuttal, but I can't, so I'm just going to have to pick one area. And it's going to be gathering from one end of heaven to the other. It is not a rapture. He said it was a rapture. That's just bad Bible study. He used Matthew 24 to prove that. Matthew 24, 31. He shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. They say, well, that's the last trump. It's not, and we'll prove that later on. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. And he said, well, that's the rapture. It's not because it's not anybody even outside the earth. Let's look at what the heaven is here. Mark 13 is the other passage there. Then shall he send his angels, shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. He says that's a rapture. Now let's find out what this uttermost part of heaven is, what this one end of heaven and the other and from the four winds are, because the Bible is very explicit about this. Jeremiah 49, 36, and upon Elam, you've, some of you have heard of Elam, will I, gather, will I bring the four winds from the four quarters of heaven. What heaven is that? Well, that's the first heaven. We'll scatter them toward all those winds. Oh, so they're going to be in the sky. Like the rapture, they're going to be in the clouds. No, no, they're all over the earth. And there shall be no nation whither the outcast of Elam shall not come. So it's all over the world. Zechariah 2.6, Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. Matthew 24 is not talking about some rapture. When it talks about the four winds, it talks about scattering. In, in Matthew, it talks about gathering, but here's the scattering that has to be gathered. Daniel 7, 2, interesting place there. Daniel spake and said, I saw my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. Hmm, first heaven. Not the third heaven that Paul said he saw somebody go to, but the first heaven. This is all happening on earth. Daniel 8.8, 8, therefore the he-goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken, for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. That's on earth. It is not some cosmos thing. This is, you got winds, you got it blowing on the great sea. It's just bad Bible study. Daniel 11.4, and when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken, shall be divided toward the what? The four winds of heaven. Wait a minute, that's the rapture, Matthew 24. No, that four winds has nothing to do with that. It just means it's worldwide. And not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion, which he ruled for his kingdom, shall he be plucked up even for others beside those. Revelation 19, 17. I saw an angel. This is, this is good Bible study here. I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of what? Heaven. This is the first heaven, the four winds of heaven. It isn't anything to do with the rapture in Matthew chapter 24. Your Bible is very explicit in this. He says, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. He talks about fly, you know, they're flying in the midst. The fowls are flying in the midst of heaven. Private interpretations did not end in the first century, but thrive today. Matthew 16, 18, and I won't get through much of this, but I'll see what I can do. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not even going to. I'm, I'm, it's a very important part, but I won't go there just because I have about a minute. What I want you to understand is this. Matthew 24 is not a rapture at all. It's a gathering together of the elect for protection to go in the millennium. Keep that thought. We'll prove it when we look at some other things. The other thing is when he, when, he goes into the, One minute. when he goes into the King James Bible, 1611, which I have a large copy, um, you know, 
because of the size that they made it back then. He looks in the margins. He says, hey, you're a King James Bible believer. Look at these notes. Hey, I don't care what the King James translators put in their notes any more than I care what Schofield put in his notes or what anybody puts or what I did when I did my notes in a Bible study for Oxford. Some of them are wrong that I did. They don't hold any weight. The key is what saith the Scripture. Either you can trust your Bible, this Bible right here. Either you can trust this Bible or you can't. And if you can't, we might as well go on home. I trust every jot, every tittle, every word, even the punctuation. I don't need to go in there and change world to age, but that's what's going on. They went under the end of the world. That's where the gospel's going to go. Listen, that, that's talking about going to all nations and evangelizing them. Thank you, Mr. Stoffer. Give me a moment to change. All right. Next up, Mr. Stoffer will begin a 20-minute presentation on the witness of the Gospels as soon as he has it loaded. See if it's... Oh, it takes a second. Okay. Got yep, it. here we go. Wow, it's working. <laughs> Hallelujah. We had a rocky start, I'm telling you. I'm sure glad we got everything worked out. We're Doug and Judy Stoffer. We're serving as your partners for truth. And my website is BibleDoug.com. I do want to invite you, if you get in the Knoxville area, that's where we're from. Uh, we go to Antioch Baptist Church there. Our main website, church website, gets about 10,000 hits a day. LearnTheBible.org or LearnTheBible.com. Fantastic preacher. In fact, my pastor and I co-authored our last three books. We're working on three more, including a revision of one book, Rightly Divided, that won't say <laughs> Hebrews through Revelation's done like that, just so you know, just, shh, just between you and I. Compilation of the Gospels. There's no rapture referenced in the Olivet Discourse. Gatherings mentioned in the Bible can take on several different meanings. The Old Testament prophets, Jesus prophesied of dark days to come before the Lord's return to earth. That's the second coming. Amos 5.18, you're looking forward to the rapture, the day of the Lord, right? Which are two separate things. But look at this. Amos 5.18, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. So you're looking forward to the day when Jesus comes back as the day of the Lord? Then you're not right with God. If Christians anxiously anticipate the day of the Lord, they're not spiritually right with God. Because Amos says you're not right with God. Another gathering that's not the church is rapture. Matthew 24, 31. I already went over this. He shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. They shall gather together as elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. And if Tim LaHaye said something that's wrong, I believe Tim LaHaye would get up and say, Hey, I was wrong. I know I would. And I know I have. And I know I will in the future. Everything I say is not right. I, don't just, I, I just don't trust the church fathers because... You're telling me I had to trust a book that's 2,000 years old that was written in Latin? And it's in English now? And I'm supposed to look in here and go, well, this is what the church fathers believed. You can't tell me that. The only thing I can trust is the Scripture. The gathering in Thessalonians is the church's rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 For the Lord Himself... You see the difference between Matthew 24 and here? It could just say, the Lord shall descend. It says, the Lord himself is coming for us, not sending his angels. From heaven with a shout, with a voice of the archangel, with a trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. It was the comfort Paul preached to the church concerning its own unique departure to meet the Lord in the air. Another gathering that's not the church's rapture is Revelation 19.11. I saw heaven open. Behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in linen, white linen, white and clean. So let me ask you something. Heaven opens, where's Jesus? He's in heaven. Heaven opens, where are the armies? In heaven. So what you got to do is, a post-tribber, you got to get everybody up to heaven. You can't stop in the clouds. you got to get them up, because where are the armies? They're leaving heaven. We'll look at Revelation and see that. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke chapter 17 is the first ace up their sleeve, but it's not. We'll see that. We're going to look at the four aces up their sleeve, the post-trib guy. What is the context of the gathering in Matthew 24, 31? You start in verse 3. It's the Mount of Olives. What is the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? Verses 4 through 8, there's great deception, he says, false Christ. 
Wars, rumors of wars, the end is not yet. Famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. That's the beginning of sorrows. Then, time note, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. and You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Matthew 24, and then many are offended. There's betrayal, hatred, false prophets deceive many. Iniquity abounds, love grows cold. Remember what we're looking at here. Matthew 24, 13, but he that shall endure in the end, the same shall be saved. He that endures the end. Let me see if I got that in here. I do. Two groups that will not endure the end of the seven years. Number one, all those who take the mark and worship the beast. Number two, those beheaded, their souls are seen in heaven awaiting the resurrection of their bodies. Those two do not endure to the end. Why? They didn't make it to the end of the tribulation. They're in heaven, you know, I mean, I'm not telling you they went to hell because they didn't endure to the end. I'm just telling you this is about flesh. This is not about soul salvation here. This second group repeatedly identified in heaven, look at Revelation 6, 9, it says the souls of them that were slain. Talking about the tribulation. Revelation 7, 14, these are they which came out of great tribulation. Very, in, very obvious who they are. And then you have Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. The souls of them that were beheaded... Uh, not worship the beast, neither his image, neither receive his mark, nor in their foreheads, and so on. So you see them up in heaven time and time again. They don't get their resurrected body until Revelation chapter 20. Why? Because they're the third part. They're the gleanings of the first resurrection. Remember, Jesus is the first fruits of them that slept. We are the harvest at the rapture of the church, and the gleanings are Revelation chapter 20. That's what your Bible teaches. I mean, come on, it's just simple Bible study. Matthew 24, 14. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world uh, for a witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. Now, I was going to go over this in the, in the rebuttal, showing you how the gospel, the grace of God, and the gospel of the kingdom are a little bit different. But let's see what I've got here. Look at what Paul said about the gospel. Colossians 1, 23. And by the way, I'm going to go to Paul right now, if that's okay. He did write scripture, more than any other, more books than anybody else. If you continue in the faith, grant and settle, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which he heard, which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereby Paul made a minister. So let me ask you something. Did Paul say in the first century that the gospel, the grace of God, went to every creature? Yes. Then are we waiting for the last Gentile to get saved, this, this thing, this time of the Gentiles that, that was defined wrong? No. The gospel of the kingdom's coming back into effect after the rapture of the church. You still got to be saved by grace in the tribulation. You can't, you gotta, you, you can't uh, take the mark of the beast and think you're going to be saved. There's no hope for you then if you're going to stay for that. Acts 20, 24, I received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So again, the gospel of the kingdom is going to go into all the world, then the end shall come. The gospel of the grace of God was preached everywhere in the first century before Paul closed his epistles that he wrote. Look at what it says in Colossians 1.5, For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, wherever you have heard before in the word of truth of the gospel, which has come unto you as it is in all the age. <laughs> it says all the world. That's world. The same Greek word, too, is Matthew 24. You see what the problem is? There's a problem in going to the Greek because you can, the Greek is imprecise compared to the English. Look at an English dictionary. As it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it doth also you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. You've got to understand, listen, the gospel of the grace of God has already gone out throughout all the world during the first century, according to Colossians 1, 5, and 1, 13. So what's the key? There's something going on. It's different. The gospel of the kingdom is going to come back into effect in the tribulation. Now we're back to Matthew 24. He talks about the abomination of desolation, stay in the holy place, Judea, flee in the mountains, housetop, not go down the house, in the field, don't turn back. Something quick's going to happen there. And woe unto you that are with child to them that give suck. Oh, look at this phrase. In those days. Remember, I already pointed out Matthew 24 which he stopped, he said, after the tribulation it's going to happen. But if you looked on the screen, it said, of those days. He stopped because it's not after the tribulation period. 
It's after the tribulation of those days, which we're looking at those days. So in other words, it's just a matter of timing, but it's Bible study. You've got to study your Bible the right way or you're going to get confused. So look at what it says. Woe unto them that are with child, and then they give suck in those days. But pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. I don't know about you, but I have never prayed that anything not happen on the Sabbath. Because I don't follow the Sabbath. Col Colossians says that those, those holy days and those Sabbath days are a shadow of things to come. For then shall be great tribulation. Not the great tribulation. It's not a period of time. That's been mistaught. Then shall come, adjective, great tribulation. That's all. So you shouldn't really even call it a period of time, three and a half years of the great tribulation, because it's a misnomer. And except, oh, look at that. Those days, the ones he just described, should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. There's the context. He that endure the end, the same shall be saved. What? His flesh, he goes into the millennium. He populates the millennium. They can't be a rapture at the end of the thing. When Jesus comes back, he's going to gather the elect. He's not gathering to take him to heaven. They have natural bodies. They've endured to the end. They're going into the millennium to populate the millennium with natural bodies. Otherwise, you have everybody with a glorified body. It doesn't work that way. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. He talks in verse 23 through 26, false Christ, false prophets, great signs and wonders, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, shineth unto the west, show also also the coming of the Son of Man. Let me just say this. I don't believe in some stupid secret rapture. When there's a shout and there's a trump, I don't know that the whole world's not going to look up when we leave. So this secret rapture, straw man, that's what that is. Let me talk about the secret rapture because Margaret McDonald started it. It's foolish. Listen, it's a lie. Lenin, Stalin, Hitler, all of them said if you tell it enough, people will believe it. I have, I have faced people and they say, well, you know, if I'd have known this Margaret McDonald, 15-year-old lassie started this whole thing. I'm looking at him going, she didn't. So there's that. Verse 23, or whatever number that is, it's too small, 28, for where sort of the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Now, we're in verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation, that's what he said. And he stopped. That's not good Bible study. Look at what it says. Of those days. You know what those days are? Everything he described right before that. That's why you can't even place this event after the tribulation. Because it doesn't say after the tribulation. It says, after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. You know what he says? He says he cuts the days short, otherwise none of the elect would ever get, would, their, their flesh wouldn't be saved. What, what do you think this might be? After the tribulation of those days, he cuts it short, and they see him up there. And then what does he do? And he shall send his angels. He cuts the days short. With a great sound of a trumpet. Oh, it's the rapture because it says trumpet. I'll show you what the last trump is. And they shall gather together as elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Oh, that's the rapture because it mentions the four winds and it mentions heaven. It's the first heaven where the fowls fly. It just means worldwide. That's the context if you study your Bible. No one knows the day nor the hour. This is always misquoted. And listen, I'm a pre-tribber, but listen, I disagree with pre-tribulation teaching as much as I... No, I don't. <laughs> I disagree with it quite a bit because we use things we shouldn't use to prove truths. Like this one. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father. One reason is he may cut the day short so nobody would know, right? Because you don't know when he's going to cut it short. It's one thought. But if the day and the hour knoweth no man, has nothing to do with the rapture. It has to do with Jesus coming back. It has to do with him sending his angels to gather the elect. The synoptic gospels refer to Lot and Noah as symbolic of Christ's second coming. I hate it when people, and I wrote a book, and, and my chapter's in the book, and they use Lot and Noah as examples of a pre-tribulation rapture. Not a good idea. Because it's not a good example. Lot and Noah are symbolic of something else. 
Noah, Lot, Enoch, and Methuselah revealed God's prophetic blueprint. Here's how they sort of relate together. Enoch walked with God. Noah walked with God. Enoch serves as a type of the church. He's translated out before the, before the worldwide flood. Noah serves as a type of the tribulation saints supernaturally protected. Enoch's protection. God translates Enoch from earth without dying as the horrors of the flood are yet over the horizon. He's a type of the church raptured or translated without dying. Enoch's reward? He is still in heaven following the worldwide judgment, picturing the church, the heavenly people that are up there after da- for the whole time of Daniel's 70th week. Methuselah's protection, that's Enoch's son. He's 969 years old, the oldest one. He dies in the year of the flood. I got this chart that shows, you know, so-and-so begat so-and-so all the way. And then you get to the year of the flood, and you, you see Methuselah dies that year. It's really neat to have seen that. He represents those who die before Christ's return, only to be physically resurrected the rapture prior to the commencement of Daniel's 70th week. He is a picture of the rapture. His name literally means when he dies, it shall come, meaning the flood. Matthew 24, 37, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, that were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, till the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now let me ask you something. Who is it that did not know? Noah? The ones that knew not were the ones that were left, the ones that died not the ones that were left behind. He took the lost away. Noah's protection. He goes through God's worldwide judgment, supernaturally protected. He's a type of the tribulation saint, supernaturally protected. Followed by God sending his angels to gather together his elect prior to his return with his armies from heaven, which is where we are, which you'll see in Revelation when we look at it. We're pro- they're protected. Noah's reward after being supernaturally protected, he's still on earth after the flood. Matthew 24, 40, then shall two be in the field. Oh, I hate it when people use this as a rapture verse. Then two are in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Same example as as Noah. Who's taken? The lost. Who's left? Noah. Two women shall be grinding the mill. One shall be taken, the lost, and the other left, the one that goes in the millennium. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. has nothing to do with a rapture. It's the second coming there. Context. Matthew 24, 43. But know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, as Joe mentioned, he would not have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be also ready for such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Second coming. That's over here. The thief does not deal with the church. You'll see that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. You see it here in Matthew 24 and elsewhere. Noah symbolized the protection of the tribulation saint for seven years. It was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the, in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, till the day that Noah entered in the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. After Noah first entered the ark, Genesis 7:1, how long did man have to repent before the world was destroyed? For yet seven days. And I'll cause it to rain. Genesis 7.10. And and this has nothing to do with the church. This is Noah, the tribulation saint, being protected. Seven days, seven years. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. Self same day. And that day they went in. They went in, male and female, all flesh, as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. Noah's day, man has seven more days to repent before the flood. The tribulation affords man seven more years to repent. Revelation 9.20 says they repented not. Revelation 16.9 says they repented not. Revelation 16.11, I like that number, I'm sorry. Blaspheme the God of heaven because their pains and their sores are repented not of their deeds. What's God looking for in the tribulation? Repentance from the world. And when they don't repent, he's going to judge them, and it's going to be a just judgment, and that's why he's doing it. It has nothing to do with the church having to suffer because we're lousy Christians. Lot's deliverance, blueprint of the tribulation saint. The days of Lot will be the same thing. The same day Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus it shall be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. See how it, and when he's revealed, his revelation, the book of Revelation. In that day, 
He which shall be upon the house top and stuff in the house, let him not come down and take it away. And, the, and he is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. The context is, Matthew 24, 27, Christ is revealed as lightning covering the entire sky. Verse 30, he appears the sign of the Son of Man. Verse 31, he sends his angels to gather the elect. Lot's deliverance, Genesis 19, 15. When the morning arose, the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, the wife, the daughters, lest you're consumed with a city. While he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, upon the hand of his wife. Does that sound like flee from Judea? In Matthew 24? Yeah. Does it sound like he's going to send his angels? Matthew 24? Yes, because Lot's a picture of the tribulation saint. Noah's a picture of the tribulation saint. Enoch's a picture of us. Methuselah's a picture of us. And I'm not going to go over that. Matthew 24, 31 again. He shall send his angels with a great, cloud, great sound of a trumpet. It's not the last trump of the church age. It's not even the seventh trumpet of Revelation. It's a gathering trumpet which we will define in the book of Numbers. They destroyed all in Noah's day, Lot's day. Look how it's all together there. Noah, Lot, Daniel's 70th week, destroyed them all, destroyed them all, destroyed them all. The only Thank ones you, that Mr. Make it the millennium. Mr. Schimmel, you have five minutes to rebut. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, how many of you have seen the Left Behind movie? Anybody? Do you, uh, yeah, in a second. Do you remember the Left Behind movie? Was that not a secret rapture? I can show you where Tim LaHaye, Dave Hunt, Hal Lindsey, some of the, four, the, the most prominent men teaching the secret rapture, he accused me, I factually accused him of using a straw man for misrepresenting what I taught. He said, I use a straw man by saying pre-tribs teach a secret rapture. Now, you may not believe it's a secret rapture, uh, Doug, but don't accuse me of using a straw man because every, left, every pre-trib movement I've seen, it's a secret rapture and people are shocked. They're trying to figure out what happened. That's a very a staple of pre-trib teaching. So uh, that was a false accusation I had to get cleared up. By the way, being left behind now is being left to be destroyed. Uh, listen to this. Listen to the context of Luke 17. Jesus says it was the same that happened in the days of Lot. They were eating, they were drinking, they were buying, they were selling, they were planting, they were building. But on the day that Lot went out from Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just the same on the day that the Son of Man is revealed. Did you catch that? It'll be just the same on this day. Not seven years later, Lot was taken out. Those who left were left behind were destroyed on the same what? The same what? The same day, guys. Lot is a beautiful picture of the rapture, but he's taken out in the same day. It's comfort for him, but wrath for those who are left behind. Do you want to be left behind at that time? Then Jesus goes on to say, remember Lot's wife. He goes on a little farther down after that to say, I tell you, on that night, there will be two in one bed. One will be taken, one will be le uh, the other will be left. Left where? Left behind. There will be two women grinding at the same place. One will be taken, and, one will be, and the other will be left. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other will be left. In other words, just like Lot was taken by the angels, right? And those left behind were destroyed. So we will be taken in the rapture. And those left behind will be what? Destroyed. You don't want to be left behind, okay? Because you're destroyed. He doesn't like these verses to be the rapture. You know why? Because in Matthew 24, when he says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, and I quote that often, there's, I have no problem with those days. I believe it's talking about those days of tribulation too, I don't, I don't understand what you, I really didn't understand that. After the tribulation of those days, the tribulation period, we're gathered up, and a few verses after that, you know what he says? Jesus says, one will be taken, and one will be what? Left. That is the rapture. Tim A has that right. He just has it wrong about it being the second installment. Okay. Enoch. He used Enoch as a picture of the preacher of rapture because God saved Enoch uh, uh, from the flood. How many would you would think if I said, hey, God had Columbus taken out in another way? So he wouldn't experience 9-11. Would that make sense? You say, that's ridiculous. Columbus was killed or died years, hundreds of years earlier. Exactly. Enoch was translated about 500 years before the flood. Had nothing to do with being taken out before the flood. Not a good picture of preacher rapture. Now I've got to get to some slides real quick. Okay, go for it, bro. Uh, we'll just go. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, let's keep going. Right there. Okay, 
when Jesus, they asked Jesus, what was the sign of your coming to the end of the age? He told them, he took them through the tribulation until the very end. And he said, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world, all nations, then the end will come. I shared with you a passage that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached till the end. Dr. Stauffer used the word different. He said it's a different gospel. He says here, the gospel of the kingdom is not synonymous with the gospel of the grace of God. They're different gospels. He says, that's not what we preach today. Next, next slide. Well, next slide, because I know I only have a little time. Here we see he makes a distinction in his book, One Authority, which he says he's revising. I'm really glad you're revising. I hope you get this stuff out of there, Doug. And I hope you're not One selling. Minute. I hope you're not selling CDs that are pushing this stuff at your table either, if you don't believe it anymore, because he has the gospel today as a gift, but the gospel of that time it has works. It's a works gospel too. Next uh, slide. Same thing. The gospel is for the church age. Uh, it's the gospel. It's not the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom is presented by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The gospel of the kingdom is Peter, presented by First and Second Peter, First, Second, Third John, Jude, Hebrews, Revelation. That's a different gospel, according to Dr. Stauffer. Next slide, please. But the, the gospel tells me, man, John three sixteen, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Whoever believes, it's by grace. Amen. Even in the gospel, it's by grace. Next slide. And he'll say it's by grace, but he'll say by works too. Paul warned, if you preach another gospel than that which is preached, let him be what? Accursed. It can't be a different gospel. Next slide. Doug Stoffer says, this gospel of the kingdom is not synonymous with the gospel of the grace of God. He goes on to say, if the church remains during the tribulation, he says, and, they're preaching, and, the, and the gospel of the king, kingdom is being preached, the Jews will be preaching a different gospel. They'll be under a curse. Thank he actually you, sees Mr. it as Schimmel. a different gospel that's under a curse. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Sorry. That's all right. Thank you. All right, we are uh, at the time of the break. I, for one, am very glad about that. Uh, <laughs> we're roughly halfway through. Um, we want to remind you this is a 15-minute break. We'd remind you not to hinder the goings or comings of these speakers, including the moderator. And we will be back with you in 15 minutes to begin to discuss the epistles, section 4. Thank you.